your your new documentary, Finding Michael. And um, I mean, it came out on Disney Plus, and I think it was pretty big, pretty big in the UK for sure. And I I met I met Bear Grylls actually. I I invited him to the Oxford Union, and um, I know I know that he encouraged you not to go past base camp. And and anyway, in any case, he was very involved in in the project. He came with you, and he knew your brother. And I was just wondering what what that experience was like meeting Bear and and being there also with um, with Nims Porja and, and yeah, well, what it's like working with legendary figures like that. I mean, I'll I'll always look back at making that film as you know one of the most special. Um, well, I was about to say projects, but times in in my life, sure. you know, just like the the experience of. Um, well, working with them was was incredible. I've always had a huge amount of respect for Bear. Bear, Bear is um, he honestly is a really a wonderful guy. man. He's a great guy. Yeah. Um, always been very kind to me. If you've seen the film, you'll you'll know when we first met. I was a kid at Eton, and he came to talk, mm-hmm. and he referred to himself as being the uh, youngest pr- Brit to summit Mount Everest. He used the word summit, which mm. if you're being a pedantic asshole which i was uh it's not that that wasn't strictly true my brother was the youngest brit to summit mount everest he was the youngest brit to climb it so i did you correct him i did correct him yeah yeah okay. yeah I, I i put my hand up and said hey um have you heard of michael matthews and he was like yeah and i was like wasn't michael matthews the youngest to summit like but you know and he was like well yeah technically he would have been and i was like oh i'm his brother and um and he he like he was so kind, and I felt like a bit of a dick straight away, basically, because he was just like he 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 he, he like apologized and stuff, which he, of course he didn't need to do. And I felt like, oh god, I wish I hadn't kind of done this now. And he gave me a big hug, and he was just like, "Your brother was an absolute legend, and that record will always be his." And I was just like, again, I felt like, uh, God, I, I kind of almost wish I hadn't done this now. But he uh, he was very very kind to me afterwards, and always kind of treated me like a little bro. After that, um, and obviously at the time I didn't realize that I would be working in entertainment or TV or whatever. But when I, when I did, I started bumping into him at the occasional thing and he was always just awesome to me. And, uh, an amazing producer called Tom Hutch and I, um, kind of molded the idea together because we'd worked on Hunted, did a television show called Hunted, which was, was quite good fun. You're basically trying to avoid, um, the special forces for two weeks um, it's great fun actually. It's, it's a cool show. And, cool. uh, and, 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 and Bear knows Tom as well. So anyway, Tom came around, we had a coffee and Tom was like, have you ever thought about, um, anything to do with Everest? And we were talking about Mike and how he was lost on the mountain and, and the fact that there had been some body recoveries now because, um, helicopters can now fly into camp too, which is something they weren't able to do before. You wouldn't want to be carrying a body through the Kumbu Icefall. Um, that's that's an almost certain uh, death wish for for those involved. Far too dangerous. Um, so being able to help chop the bodies out was, ama- it w- was a, a big development because you can bring the bodies down to camp three, camp two, and helicopter them out. Um, and so we started talking about that, and it was a slow slow moving thing because it's such a big idea. I spoke to my parents, just said, you know, would there be any interest in in me going to Everest and seeing if we can recover Mike? And um, in theory, it sounded great. Then of course, there's the potential loss of life uh, to recover a body and um, but by all accounts, you know, risking human life to recover a body is obviously not something that's worthwhile. Uh, Bear then makes the introduction to Nims, who is a kind of yeah. superhuman uh, kind of force of nature up there. He described climbing Everest uh, being a similar thing to me walking to co-op and back, um, <laughs> which I found marginally offensive <laughs> given that I've done the Marathon like- de Sable and the Jungle Ultra and other bits and bobs that probably okay. make me fitter than your average person. Um, but, uh, but he, he, he basically, he basically was like, um, you know, I, I can yo-yo up and down this thing. No worries. Like you, you, you don't have to be concerned for us. And I was like, well, look, the family is always going to be concerned for, for, you know, cause there's natural disasters and all kinds of stuff. And he just said, look, we're going to be climbing the mountain several times anyway, whether you, you know, want to do this or not. 
we'd be very happy to do it. These guys, there are people in my team that have summited Everest over 20 times. It's their backyard. They, they get it. Like it's, it, it, it doesn't feel a risky thing to them. And like with all of that, we, we decided to, to progress, went to Everest. Um, I was at base camp for, for like five weeks, uh, which is, it's a really long time to be at base camp. So basically Everest base camp is, is just shy of the height of Kilimanjaro. It's like 5,000, so isn't it? Or, right. Yeah. It's five. Is it, is it five, three something? I should know this obviously, but it's a while. Hang on. Let's have a look. So I shouldn't really be researching stuff in the middle of an interview. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, yeah, five three six four uh, meters. So pretty high, yeah. you know. Like you're you're significantly higher than Mont Blanc. You're a very similar height to Kilimanjaro, you know. And, and you're living there for kind of five weeks. Um, it's actually really funny. You're kind of if you spring out of bed quickly and you like walk to the walk to the sink that we had outside this communal sink quickly and you brush your teeth and you walk back to your tent, you'll be like really out of breath. Like the air is, is really wow. thin and it's kind of like, you, you don't, you don't do much. Like you wouldn't be going like exploring say, and like running around and it, like it, it kind of, it's not really like you're quite, you don't move much for five weeks, mm-hmm. which for me is a bit of an issue. Sorry. I, I, I keep just pivoting off the question. So no, working with worry. NIMS was really interesting his physiology yeah. is insane, right? Like these guys can climb Everest with no oxygen. They, they, on one day, on the second search, they pushed from base camp straight to camp four in a single push, um, which wow. to anyone listening, is, it's a huge deal. It's, it's an enormous climb uh, at, at alarming altitudes. Uh, you know, then they spend one night at camp four, then they're up and summiting and yo yoing all over the place. They're, they're like incredible people. Um, working with Bear was was a complete kind of honor and a pleasure. Uh, he exec produced the film. The film is one of one of the only projects, well, that Clean Co, the film, and, you know, maybe a couple of other things are, are the things that I professionally have really cared about. Like I was so invested in this film that it's probably the only time I've, I've really cared about the public response to something. Um, but fortunately, uh, I was very touched to, to see that people, um, you know, lo- lo- love the film, but yeah, Tom Hutch messaged me, um, just now actually, whilst we were speaking, <laughs> okay. which is completely bizarre. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what yeah, he, he's, he's obviously, he's, he, uh, his ears are burning. Um, he's the other exec. <laughs>